How's it going everyone? Today I'm going to show you how to install Linux Mint 21.2 Victoria. As of late yesterday, it started to stream out to various mirrors in preparation for the official launch announcement. In this case, we can jump right into what I'd call the RTM, or Release to Manufacturing build. So let's get started. So 9to5 Linux went ahead and posted an article mentioning that the ISO for 21.2 was now available out on some of the stable mirrors already. So we're going to basically be going off of downloading it from this article here, and we'll get into more of that in just a moment here. When it is actually officially announced, then the main Linux Mint page will have it on their main page you would see here. Anyhow, let's go ahead and jump into the system requirements. Now these are the system requirements that are pulled from the beta, but things shouldn't really have changed that much. So you would need two gigs of RAM, four gigs recommended for comfortable usage, 20 gigs of disk space, 100 gigs recommended, 1024 by 768 resolution. So nothing too extreme here. And I will have links to all these in the description below if you want to go ahead and take a look at them further. So what I'll be going over today is actually installing the 21.2 Cinnamon desktop experience version. You can go ahead and choose either of these two as well if you want Mate or the uh, XFCE desktop experiences. But like I said, we're just going to be doing Cinnamon today. And then we're also going to make the USB thumb drive, the USB bootable thumb drive, using Rufus, as we're going to be building it within Windows 10. So if you haven't seen my previous videos where I went ahead and used Rufus for building up a USB thumb drive, basically just go to Rufus's website, which I will have a link below for. And then if you scroll down, then there should be the latest releases box here. And then what I just do is download the version, usually the standard version, for Windows X64, or obviously if you've got a 32-bit machine, then you would choose that option. Or if you're using ARM, then you would choose the ARM option here. I generally stay away from the portable version, just because these two versions, or the ARM version, get the job done. So I already went ahead and downloaded Rufus, which the nice thing of Rufus is that it's literally just an executable. There's nothing that actually has to be installed to run it. You do have to have admin rights on the machine in order to utilize it. And I have already downloaded the 21.2 Cinnamon Desktop Experience ISO. So let's go ahead and fire up Rufus. Get the UAC prompt, hit yes. And you can choose to allow Rufus to check online for updates. In this case, since we're going to be nuking this machine and putting Linux Mint on it, I don't care about this. So we can just hit no. And then at this screen, we can go ahead and click select. And then here is the ISO. So I'll select that, hit open. And then I'm going to leave everything as default here, but if you need to alter anything, and so depending on how old your machine is, you may have to change up the partition scheme. For instance, for the MBR, you actually have the option for older machines or UEFI, and then you have the GPT version here, which is strictly UEFI. I'm just going to leave it as MBR here. Leave everything else as is. That's all fine. And we're going to hit start. And then if it pops up with this here, I just usually choose the recommended state, so we'll hit OK. And so if you get this grub warning here, I just go ahead and select yes. So it pulls it down from the internet. And then really anything that pops up here, in this case the says Linux is not compatible, yada yada yada, just hit yes here. And then it's going to warn you saying that everything on the thumb drive is going to be nuked. And that's fine. Obviously this is your chance to back, to hit cancel and back up whatever you need if for some reason you didn't do that already. So we're just going to hit OK because I don't care about the data that is on the drive currently. And then now we just have to be patient. Feel free to walk away and take a breather, come back in five or ten minutes, and then this should be done depending on the speed of your USB thumb drive. I will also have a recommended USB thumb drives listed in the description below. Obviously, if you're using USB 2.0, it's going to be super slow, so I highly recommend USB 3.0 drives to speed things up. As long as, of course, you have the hardware that's capable of using USB 3.0. All right, so in this case, it really only took three minutes and 11 seconds, so that was nice and fast. So we can close out a Rufus here. So one of the most difficult parts of getting a newer operating system to install on any machine is going to be to get the thing to actually boot from your thumb drive. 
you know, you could be clicking the F1 key, F2 key, F8 key, F10, F12, the delete key, or on surfaces, you have to do the button sequence of pressing the power button and while also holding the volume up or volume down button. So there's a whole bunch of various ways to get a machine to actually allow you to boot from a thumb drive. Now, my recommendation is to do a Google search of your make and model of machine and try to figure out the exact key that you have to tap. You also may get lucky. Not a whole lot of manufacturers have this anymore, but as your machine boots and it comes to that post screen, aka the screen that shows like the manufacturer's logo or whatnot, it sometimes actually mentions the key that you need to tap in order to actually get into the boot menu or boot order. So once again, I just recommend just Google it to try to make it as painless as possible. So in my case, I'm on a Lenovo machine, so I'm gonna go ahead and restart it here. And I already know that F12 will get me into the boot order. All right, we're at the boot order here, so we'll go ahead and arrow down to the thumb drive. One thing to also mention is that you most likely will have to disable secure boot if secure boot is actually enabled in the BIOS. And usually if I go to actually enter setup just to show you here, now of course every BIOS is different. However, if I go to security in this case, and then I can move down to secure boot. And then in this case, it is disabled for me, but if it was enabled, obviously it would say enabled and then I can toggle it on. But in my case, I will leave it as disabled. And then I'm just gonna do an F10 to save and exit. Yes, start mashing that boot order key again, F12 for this Lenovo machine. And we'll hit enter for the thumb drive. And then we will start it here. Just the first one is fine. Hit enter, wait for it to load up here. So in this case, it's automatically starting Linux Mint as a live disk at the moment, but we actually want to install it. So let's go over to install Linux Mint. And then this here will start the installation process. So in this case, go ahead and select your language and we'll hit continue. It's going to ask you for your keyboard layout. I'm going to leave mine as is, hit continue. When I see the multimedia codex option, I do check it, the enhanced features. So we'll hit continue. And then in the installation type, you can actually choose to do a dual boot system. However, I have experienced these days with Windows 10 and Windows 11 that when Windows updates happen, Microsoft loves to just eradicate Grub so that you can not boot from your Linux partition. So I recommend strictly making it one operating system or the other machine. So in this case, I'm going to select Erase Disk and install Linux Mint, and we can click on Advanced Features, and this does give you some options here. In my case, I'm just going to leave it as None. However, if you wanted to pursue these other options, then certainly feel free to do a Google search on them for more information. But None is fine in this case. We'll hit OK and Install Now. And this is just going to ask us, do we really want to write the changes to the disk? Hit continue. And then as it starts installing, it's also going to ask us some configuration options here. In my case, I'm just going to leave it as New York. We'll hit continue. And then it's going to start asking you for information. So in this case, your name, I'm just going to type in user. Your computer's name, I'm just going to type in, blank this out, and we can just call it Linux-Mint. Pick a username, choose whichever username you want here. Type in whatever you like, and then go ahead and type in a password and confirm it. And if all is well, you should have the check mark. Hopefully it doesn't say the password doesn't match. This is your option here to either just have it automatically log in without prompting you for a password when you turn the computer on or require my password to log in. And then you can also encrypt my home folder here. I'm going to leave the encryption off, but I am going to leave the require my password to log in for the extra security capabilities. We'll hit continue. And then for some light entertainment, you can go ahead and expand out the little arrow there so you can kind of watch things as they crunch along here. Many people do ask how I'm capturing the video and able to get into, say, the BIOS of a machine and whatnot with my capture device. And that's because I'm using a Pi KVM, which at some point I may do a video on, although there's quite a few already out there. But it is a really nifty device if you haven't seen them before or tried them out and we'll just be patient as it continues to crunch all right so we've got the installation complete portion here so you can 
continue to run it as the live environment, or we can go ahead and restart now, and it's going to actually boot from our drive. So in this case, let's do a restart now, and then it's gonna tell you to please remove the installation medium and then press enter. So in this case, I will remove the thumb drive, and with the thumb drive removed, now I can just hit enter. Now, if all goes well, we should start booting here. And now we're at the login screen, so let's go ahead and type in the password. And then for the connection established, we can just click on don't show this message again. And then it's going to pop up with a helpful little welcome screen here. We can click on let's go, and it's just going to run us through a whole bunch of first step things that you can feel free to take a look at. In this case, we're just going to go ahead and uncheck the show this dialog at startup, and we can close out of this, but feel free to peruse this more. Should you be interested, we click X. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and change the display settings, which for the most part, you shouldn't have to manually change it because it should probably auto detect your display unless you don't have the graphic drivers. So let's go ahead and right click on the desktop. Let's go to display settings and I will change this to 1920 by 1080. And in this area, you will also be able to choose if you want 100% or 200%. I generally keep it at 100%, but if you've got older eyes, you may want to choose 200% here. And then you can change landscape or portrait and all the other fancy stuff here. And you can also adjust your refresh rate, which for the most part, it should just automatically detect again with your resolution if all is well. So I'm just going to apply this and we will keep new configuration. Now it's definitely a lot crisper. One thing also to note is up here, there is the settings section, which gives you a few more options to choose from here, more on the mobile side of things. So we can close out of this. One of the big things that people like about the Cinnamon desktop experience is that it looks pretty close to what the Windows environment is. A lot of people prefer this one over a lot of the other desktop environments. And so I'll go through just a general orientation of what we've got here. All the way to the left hand corner, you effectively have your start menu down here, which of course shows you all your applications. Lots of preloaded fancy things in here, which I'll leave up to you to go ahead and take a gander through, but lots of different options here. You've got your shutdown button, your logout button, your lock screen button, your files option. So this would be all your files on the machine, basically your file explorer in the Windows lingo. You've got your terminal, system settings and control center. We can click on that. And so this gives you all sorts of different options. You can do backgrounds, you can adjust effects, font selection, themes, you know, you can really get into a lot of preferences here. Lots of stuff to go through here. Feel free to take a gander at things. When in doubt, try it. Hope for the best. You've got your software manager. So on the software manager, you can download apps within here instead of having to hunt things down. So lots of options within this nice handy little app here. Certainly feel free to dig into that further. Go ahead and close out of that and we'll go back to the start menu. And then of course at the very top you've got Firefox browser and you can feel free to set things up here or you can skip the step and just keep skipping your steps until you get all the way to the end here. You got your good old fashioned clickbait here. Never leave home without it. But yeah, that's your Firefox browser there. It's built in. And of course, as you see here, you do have files, Firefox and the terminal down here as quick launch icons as well. And then on the right hand side, as we can see here, some system reports require your attention. Let's click on that. In this case, we can go ahead and click install the language packs, make it happy, continue. It's gonna ask you for your password, enter, I'm gonna chug along. It's gonna tell you the system restore utility. In my case, I'm just gonna click ignore this report. Are you sure you wanna ignore it? Okay. Make that happy with the check mark there. We'll click out of that. Next up, we've got the welcome to the update manager. We can click on this. So this is where you'll be pulling your security updates, software updates, and that kind of stuff. So we can click OK for this. And then as you can see, we already have a whole bunch of updates here. And if you get this little pop up here where it says, do you want to switch to a local mirror? Let's click yes. Go ahead and type in your password, authenticate. And then here you could change things up and then we can wait for it to load up here. In this case, I'm just going to select this one just to move us along. So now these are both in the U.S. here. And we can hit OK. Now it's going to update the cache. You can click Details to see what's actually happening. We can close out of this portion here. And we can dig right into here. And so let's go ahead and do Install Updates. And type in your password again. And then let's wait for it to crunch on it here. 
Look at the details for some entertainment. As much as people say that Linux distros are immune to viruses and malware and all that good stuff, that is not true. I strongly recommend you keep everything up to date. Then let's take a look at this local mirror thing again one more time. In this case, let's just leave this as is instead of that. And we click refresh one more time just to see if anything else is out there. That looks fine. So we can go ahead and close out of this now. And now the little shield go down here says your system is up to date. The other option is going to be connected to the wired network. So we can click this. So this is your network settings. You can feel free to take a look in here. It'll show your connections, your settings. Here's your volume options. You can change up your brightness and you can also change up your power settings. Feel free to tinker around in here. There is a scroll bar that's slightly hidden right there, or we can go ahead and maximize this, make it a little bit easier to see. And you can also take a look at the brightness section here, and you can alter all sorts of stuff there. I'm just going to leave everything as is. So we'll click out of that. And then, of course, you have your clock down here that if you click on it, then shows your calendar. Of course, you could toss in events and all that good stuff. And you can also go to the date and time settings, in which case you may want to toggle off the 24-hour clock. We'll just leave that as is. You can also display the date. You can even display the seconds change up your first day of the week and here you can also change the region and city if you need to alter it after the fact we can close out of this so going back to the desktop here so i right clicked on the desktop previously and i went to display settings but you do have all sorts of different options here for instance you can create a new folder you can create a new document you can do empty document create a new launcher add Desklets. You can change the desktop background. We can click on that just to take a look at the fancy things here. So there's all sorts of different options. We can go to Victoria here. See all the nice new backgrounds here. We can also go to settings and you can change up stuff in here. We'll leave that all as is. So click out of that. And then again, there's the display settings that already went over. You can open the terminal. You can open as root. You can also customize. Let's click on customize. Maximize this. And so you can feel free to adjust things here. You also have icon size up here on the right. I'm just going to leave this all as is so we can click out of this. And so really at this point, everything is set up. Generally speaking, even though it didn't prompt us to do a reboot after the updates, I generally like to just reboot the machine just to make sure everything is fresh after said updates are done. But besides that, this gives you a general base to build on. Feel free to tinker discover new things, mess around with things, what's the worst that can happen. So anyhow, that's all you need to do to install Linux Mint 21.2 Victoria. If you found the video to be useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I also invite you to check out my other video guides on various projects. I try to get a new video out every one to two weeks, and I've got a lot of interesting guides on the horizon. Anyhow, until next time, take it easy.